Hey, what's up everybody? It's Brian here with another tutorial. This time we're jumping into Houdini and we're going to model this. Houdini is one of the most powerful packages out there when it comes to 3D modeling and visual effects creation. I love Houdini. In fact, it's pretty much stolen my heart in the last year or so as I've started to learn the software. I've even moved from Cinema 4D and a Maya workflow to exclusively Houdini as of late. And I want to share some of that knowledge with you guys. This tutorial is not necessarily an introductory tutorial if you've never used Houdini before, but you should be able to get good insight. And I'm going to do my best to be as descriptive as possible as we model this. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to procedurally model and understand a simple operation in our SOPS network, and I'll explain what that is here in a second. So without any further explanation, let's get started. Okay, so we're in Houdini for the first time, and all I've done so far is I've imported a simple file in a geo node. If this is your first time looking at Houdini, as I expect some of you guys will be looking at Houdini for the first time, this right here is just a simple network. It's a node based system. That's what makes Houdini so powerful in comparison to some other 3D packages out there is it's very procedural and it's nodal, which means if we create a node, we can always come back and edit that. And then anything down its chain will be updated so long as that operation you know, works in unison. For this tutorial, we're only going to work in SOPs, which is surface operators. We're just going to create geometry. That's what we're going to do. We're not going to do anything crazy, but the power of Houdini really is in its operators. Uh, especially DOPS, which is the dynamic operators. Uh, if you're if you're looking for a 3D package to get used to to learn, I highly suggest Houdini. It's not expensive, and it's really the industry standard uh, when it comes to doing high end visual effects like destruction. Uh, Houdini is really in the forefront. It's not the only one, but it's in the forefront. Uh, and it works really well with all the other software packages out there. I routinely go from Houdini to Maya. I also go from Houdini to After Effects as well. So in this case, I wanted just to start off with a simple import here. I have AI shapes. It's this X. We'll come back to this. I don't want to spend too much time doing the logistics of this tutorial. I want to show you guys the power behind Houdini in this tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a light bright array, as you guys saw at the top of this video. So let's go ahead and start with the new geo node. You're just going to hit tab with your cursor over your network editor. And I'm going to create a new geometry node, uh, a tube or a peg. We're going to call this a peg. Let's jump in and I'm going to hit tab, type in tube like so. So we've got this, we have this tube here. Uh, we want a polygon tube. Uh, we can zoom in a little bit. Um, this is a little small, so I actually uh, want to increase the radius by let's say 10. Yeah, that's too big. Let's go five, yeah, that's better. Uh, let's do a height of let's say 25. There we go. We don't need 12 columns, we need half of that. We need six to make this peg look like a light bright peg. Uh, light brights have that, they're not, circular or usually they're not circular they they have this hexagonal shape and we're going to use this shape here uh this tube is going to drive this entire tutorial like I, you're going to see me use this tube for a number of reasons and that's why i love houdini so uh i want to actually add end caps here another thing i want to do is i want to center this tube on the origin right now it's actually centered at the origin but i want to center it flat flush against the origin so that it's not below the ground assuming the ground plane is at zero 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 so to do that what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna come over here to the height i'm gonna right click copy parameter and then i'm gonna come up to the center x and y on the y i'm going to paste relative reference and then i'm gonna divide that by two by just using forward slash and typing two and now it's going to pin it there why is that awesome because now if i come over here and i make any changes it's always going to be at the origin so a little handy tool there but you know so we now have air peg uh created we're going to create a null here and on this null we're going to name it out peg basic and then i'm going to type in c with my cursor over here Highlight the null and color black just to stay organized. Hit U to jump back up to your surface operator level and the object level. Sorry, the object level in your network editor. And now let's create that array. I'm going to create a new geometry node. We're going to call this array light bright. Let's dive in. I'm going to create a node called the object merge. If you remember, I created that null. What that's going to allow me to do now is bring in that object from another network into this one. So here's peg. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in the peg here. 
and hit accept. And there it is, it's now in this network. Uh, and then we're gonna type in a blast node. Now, the reason we're doing a blast node, what a blast node does is it deletes uh, everything. In this case, uh, we don't want it to delete everything. What we want to do, so let's come back up here. If you hit the blue, it's going to uh, view whatever's current. I actually want to show off the primitives here. So here are the prim IDs, the numbers. Uh, primitives in this software are essentially faces in Maya or 3ds Max. And they're the polygons here in this case. Uh, and they each get an ID. Uh, as you can see, the top is zero, the bottom is one. Now, in this case, what I actually want to do is I want to keep the bottom one, which is one. So what I want to do is come in here and type in one into the blast node group. Uh, and that's just going to group this one for me. And if you come over here, everything is staying except for one, but we don't want that. I actually want to keep it. So if we come up over here and hit delete non-selected, it'll invert that operation. And now I have just this ground plane. And that's what we want. The next thing I want to do is I want to convert this whole thing into a circle. And the reason I'm doing this is because if you notice, there are points here. If I turn on the number, you'll see that there are points here now, okay? Just like the primitives, the points have IDs. These are point IDs. So I have zero, one, okay? The operation I'm about to do right now is to create just a singular point to replace this whole tube so I have a location. Uh, in order to do that, I need to center it. The simplest way to do that is to get rid of the points and then replace the no points with a singular point. Keeping up? Yeah, a little complicated, I know. So just follow this operation and then hopefully this is gonna make sense to you here in a second. So let's go back to the convert, red circle. Afterwards, I wanna type in an add node. And on this add node, there is an option here called delete geometry, but keep the points. There's no points. So what do we do? we have to create one at its center because we used a circle. And this, this operation will work with other shapes too. Uh, the circle will operate as a bounding box essentially. And so it'll go to the centroid of that object. In this case, we created a centroid at the base because we blasted the whole object, forcing it to go to the origin, which is zero, zero, zero in this case. And now we have this point. So we got a point. And um, just to stop here, I'm gonna create a null. That way, just in case I make any variations down the line, I have, a point to come back to, and we're gonna call this out single point and color that black. But we're not done yet, we're gonna keep going. The next thing I wanna do is start creating that array. One of the cool things in Houdini is I can now copy what I've done before and just move it over. Instead of having to you know, copy a tube in, do this whole tree here, blast it out, create more points, I can just take this point now and do what I want to do with it. So in this case, let's go ahead and do what's called a copy and transform. I'm going to drag that, connect it. Let's view that. Uh, and we want to move in the X axis this way. So let's go ahead and come over here. I'm going to use the middle mouse button. You guys have seen me do this already, but now I'm showing you how to do it. The middle mouse button, I'm holding it down. I'm going to move up to about the one or the 10. And then if you go side to side, it'll move in that step. So, and that's what these are called steps. So if you, in this case, uh, let's say um, I want to go 20, let's go 25. So let's come back five. There we go. So 25, you can type that into. Uh, and we've moved 25. Now I only have one copied point, but let's say I want more. I can just come over here and do the exact same thing. Let's just add, let's add 32 points in this case. That looks good. So now we have 32 points all the way across. Boom, done, right? We, we've created an entire line of points. But we wanna create more. We wanna create an array that just, that's not just going horizontal, but also vertically down on the Z axis. So let's come over here now. Um, and the next thing I wanna do is I wanna do another copy. And now what this one's gonna do is gonna copy the points we just created here, not the one point, but all the points. And we're gonna do it in the Z axis. Uh, in this case, I actually wanna go down so we did 25, so we're, we pretty much just create a square here now. Um, let's do half of that. Let's do 12.5. And then what I actually wanna do on the X axis, I want to offset it over. So we're, we wanna move in a diagonal in this case, because a light bright, um, it's like offsetting hexagonal rows. So in this case, I just wanna move it over. And so we have this one. Now, conventional wisdom, would say, all right, now let's just duplicate these ones down individually. But now since it's on the node tree, and if I create another node, all of these points will be affected by that new node, then what I can do is I do another copy. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So copy and transform. And now, so let's call this one horizontal. 
Let's call this one vertical offset. And let's call this one vertical. And now on this one, what I want to do is let's move down and see what happens when I type in 25 in the z-axis. It moves it down. And now look at that. I have alternating location of rows creating this array. And so in this case, let's go back down, let's say 25. And I now have this array of points. And they all get their own individual ID. You, you know, we end up at about 1599. It's 1600 points, but we start at point zero. So, so now we have our array. So let's create another null, and we're going to call this out array, color this one black, and let's jump back up, stay organized here. And we now have our two major ingredients to pull this effect off. So let's create one more geo node, and this is where all the magic is going to happen. In this geo node, we're going to call this X light bright. And now we're going to take these three geometry nodes and information now, and we're going to pipe them all together. Uh, but before we do anything, let's modify our X here. I'm going to turn this off so we don't see anything. Uh, I'm going to do a transform. Let's move centroid to origin like so. And then I'm going to do another transform. That way I stay organized. I'm going to rotate on the X axis 90 degrees. So it's flat on the ground like so. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to type in a poly extrude. Do not worry about your geometry here. It does not need to be polygon or triangulate, triangulated perfectly. We're not using this for our end product. We're using this to create what's called a boundary. So on the poly extrude node, uh, we are going to go in the negative direction because I'm pointed in the opposite direction. So negative 25. Don't worry about size. I just pick, randomly picked one. Uh, but I want to do a transform here to make sure that this works. And this last transform is actually going to drop this down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy parameter here. Go to the transform. So I'm copying the parameter from the extrude. And then on the translate, I'm going to paste relative reference. And then just like we did before, I'm going to divide it in half. And now what's going to do is just like we did earlier, we're just doing it in opposite. This is putting it at the center. Okay. Let's go ahead and add in another null. And we're going to call this out x. Uh, actually, it's called out x boundary. OK, so, if I can spell. Cool. Let's go back up. Let's go into that new geo node that we created, the x light bright. And we have, like I said, all of our assets are ready to go. And let's just import them in here and just work organized. So this first one, I'm going to import the peg. Okay. So the peg's been imported. Let's call this peg. I'm going to do another object merge. This one is going to be the array. There's the array. You can see the points, like so. And then the last one I want to import, and I'm doing this in a specific order for this reason, is the X from our AI shapes. Okay, call this X. Oh, they are all in here now. So the next thing we want to do is just to simply create this array. So uh, let's add the pegs. Another cool operation is here. I can now copy to points. We created points in the array. This is the geo to copy. These are the points to be copied to. And if I show this and turn off all of my IDs, we now have under a light bright array. Now, one thing you're probably going to notice right off the bat is there's this space in between our pegs. And if you look at ever look at a light bright, there's that space that doesn't exist. Now, I intentionally did this because I want to show you guys the power of Houdini. Okay. All right. So this isn't quite working. I need to make my pegs bigger. So let's go up and instead of having to go back and like in say, let's say Maya, delete all this geo, create the other one, and then reinstance it. What I can actually do is just dive right back into the peg and pay attention to these to use a trans. Actually, you know, because we did the relative reference here, let's go to the radius scale and let's just keep growing it. Look at that. They are all transforming. Of course, you can do this in other 3D packages. Um, re relatively easy. 
Uh, but uh, look how easy I did it in, in Houdini. This is ridiculously easy, right? Uh, let's do a few more changes here. We have a light bright now. Cool. Let's take this even further. Let's use our X in Houdini now to design what we want it to look like. So let's dive back into the X light bright. What I want to do is I want to add a group operation, this node right here. And for those of you experienced Houdini users out there are by now are watching this and saying, hey, I know another way to do this. And that's great. I'm showing you one way. One of the beautiful things about Houdini, there are a million ways to do things. So I'm going to use a group operation here. Let's label this group uh, X boundary and the group name I actually want to call x points all lowercase okay let's set up keep in bounding oper uh bounding regions let's switch this to points and only work in points go to points or vertices only by bounding object and let's connect this so my points and then let's group it by the x and let's show it now one thing you'll notice all of a sudden some of our points are highlighting yellow that's because they are being selected for this group so now I've created this group, let's use this X. I'm gonna use a transform node after the X. Let's just squeeze it in there. You can just drag and drop it so it connects both links. Uh, and then let's just move this. Move this over, this down, oops, not that direction, down. All right, right there, it's fine for now. You'll notice these have been selected, okay? So now let's rebuild this copy to points. When I just use the Y, hold down Y to get the scissors and you just drag and it'll clip everything out. Let's connect uh, the points to be copied to this group. And now in this copy to points, if you come over here to group or target points rather, you can create the group X points and voila. Now we are only creating geo on points that have been selected. Okay. Of course, I could have used a Boolean operation or even a grouping operation earlier. However, because this is a light bright and you don't have half pegs, you want to create a full geo or no geo. You, it's a zero or one operation. There's no in between. And so we're going to do it on the points, of course. It's just an easier way to do things. And you guys are probably thinking now, you know, I can draw images like this. I can create a light bright, you know, do a smiley face. Absolutely. In fact, it's so procedural that I can change the location. Watch this. Now the pegs are moving. And that's a way to procedurally model in Houdini. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. I actually live streamed this tutorial, but I felt I would re-record this so that it looks better for you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. This is the first Houdini tutorial on this channel, but it will not be the last. So please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when new videos go live. And I'll see you in the next video.